All right, party mode for a minute, guys. Oh, that was stressful. Hope you can see that. Oh, all the practice exams I took, I scored like a 70 or 71 or 72. I got kind of rushed through them, got in here, took my time, and I guess I just got lucky on a bunch. Man, that was almost foreign compared to a lot of the practice tests. There were some things that were gimmies, and then there was a bunch of things that were not. I'll tell you all about it when I get in there. But yeah, boom, I got my part 107. Yes. Oh, all right. Well, that was crazy. Man, that was fun in a way because I felt like I was prepared. But at the same time, there was some stuff on there I had no idea. I, I didn't have to take any classes, didn't pay for anything uh, like a lot of people are doing. And YouTube basically got me through it. So the, uh, the test itself, it literally hit everything. Um, what I did is basically heavily prepared for certain areas, like the basic information, all those, you come across real easily, all the numbers you need to know. Some of that was on there, but very little actually. It was very little on uh, the heights of different things, and how high can you fly, how far from clouds, all that. There was a few questions on there, so you need to know all that, and it's easy to remember. It's real basic, simple memorization stuff. But I spent so much time in that book. Oh my goodness, that book. I wore that thing out, left and right and left and right, and you'll hear a lot of people talk about that in the book, there's a lot of answers, and there are, but at the same time, they're not just in there and you know them, they're not just like there. They don't just go, oh, go find this answer and here's your answer. No, that's that's not what what it is. It's uh, you you need to become familiar with that book itself. Kind of it's almost has a learning curve just to be able to use that book. Um um, efficiently, I should, I should say. Answer might be staring you at the face on the page, especially like the radio feed frequencies. I believe I had, I may have had 10, 15 questions just on radio frequencies. Oh my goodness. And it wasn't your typical, like, go and look underneath where the airport name is, and there's the CTAF, or there's the few little frequencies that are sitting right there. No, you had to go to different other pages in the manuals. I don't remember the name of the pages itself, but it had all types of frequency stuff that I, I was not prepared for. So I'm, I'm thinking I got those wrong or I guessed them right. I don't know. I think I missed eight questions total. Um, then what's kind of neat, so if, all right, let me kind of back up everything. So I arrived a little early. I was listening to some Mr. Me classroom, a little bit of other YouTubes, YouTube videos on the way, way there. And I got there about 30 minutes earlier and I kind of walked around. I just kind of walked around, got a little bit of the nerves that were out of me and uh, just listened to some stuff on my phone as I was walking around. About 10 minutes before I was supposed to be in there, which was 9 a.m., I walked in and um, they basically they had a, they had a red bag for me. I had to stick everything in. I was allowed to bring a little jacket in in case it was a little cold. I was not allowed to wear a hat. My little bald head gets cold in there, but it, it, it was fine. Um, they set you down in front of a camera and they begin to talk to you, ask you a few questions, make sure it's you, and give you a chance to use the bathroom, whatever. You know, you have two hours for the 60 questions. They act like it's no big deal to get up and get up and go use the bathroom or do whatever you need to do, and which was really odd to me. I thought that would be a no-no, but yeah, they, they acted like it was no big deal. Um, take as many breaks as you want to, but the time would not stop. That, that was the big thing. All right, so anyways, um, I went to the restroom before I started the test, went in, sat down in front of the test, and it was kind of like an old computer. And I, I do use everything Apple, so maybe just it just seems like the um, that it was an older computer, or whatever. But had a mouse on a cord and this huge screen. And what was really awkward and funny about it is the question was in the top left-hand corner, itty bitty questions. You almost had to pull out your magnifying glass just to see the question on the screen. I didn't. It was fine. I can see that. All right. So you sat down and you had to do a practice test 
before you took the test. You had to take five questions. They asked some silly things just to kind of make sure you could manipulate the actual test itself. I know they asked me how many states are in our country. What's the capital of the United States of America? Stuff like that. Um, so anyways, that, that was user friendly. So you go through, take the five questions, click a few more buttons, and then you had to do a lot of just staring at spinning wheels. And then finally the test would start. So if you go in anxious, ready to begin the test, fired up, ready to go, you're sitting there looking at spinning wheels, the wheels of death, and they were annoying because <laughs> I wanted to go. Um, anyway, so I had a plan when I first went in. This was my plan going in, and I kind of stuck with it, but was to just go through each question, and if I knew it, boom, I'd answer it and uh, move on. If I did not know it, I'd, I had a, I would do a quick guess, I'd mark it, all right, and then I would come back to everything that was marked. And that's, that's basically what I did. It took me about 40, 45 minutes to go through the 60 questions because there was so much flipping through that book. Go to figure 20, 25 and go find the answer. It was a lot of those. So you had to spend a lot of time flipping. So I, I came up with a little, um, little way to help me out. So when you were flipping through the charts, all right, a lot of those charts, you would get the answer or you'd feel more comfortable about your answer if you would go back and look at the legend, which was at the beginning, first couple pages back there. So they give you a clear sheet of paper. I stuck that clear sheet of paper right there where um, the legend is. And so if I was on figure 25, a map, and I was like, oh, I think I know the answer, but I want to look at the legend, I could quickly just go back to the legend instead of having to flip a whole bunch and waste all those seconds doing that. Because you do, you'll flip back and forth two or three times just for one question. And that kind of helped me out. Anyway, so I went through all the questions and um, marked those that I thought I just didn't know, I didn't have a clue on, there was 12 of those. And just used a little bit of common sense trying to get through that. I remember there was quite a few nighttime questions. I remember one in particular that said, what do you do if you are you look at a bright light at night and it ruins your, your vision? What do you do? And I kind of whittled it down to you use your visual observer or you stop the flight until you have um, regained your night vision. I went with that last one, but I was at first going with my visual observer. But I'm thinking they're going on the safety thing there. What's the safest thing to do is you just need to, since you're the pilot, you need to stop your, your flight, even though you can continue it. I know you can, but that would be the safest thing to do. Something that was a safety thing. Um, oh, I've forgotten everything else. The first one, the first two or three I marked, bugged the fire out of me. I was like, oh no, I don't know any of this stuff. But anyway, so that's that. Um, some of those maps, oh my gosh. They're so, you have to have, you have to. I've got good eyes. I've got some really good eyeballs. I can see really far, I can see really close. And my eyeballs were sitting there, oh my goodness, what is going on? Because you're you're looking at a screen that's bright and your eyes are looking at those light, kind of blurry um, piece of paper that's not that big, that's a, an excerpt from a map. And it kind of messes your eyeballs up. So my testing facility, which is in Huntsville, Alabama, they gave me a magnifying glass. They gave me a four function calculator. They gave me the option to wear some earplugs. I didn't use them. It may be helpful, maybe not. I'm not, I wasn't too distracted by a little bit of movements and noises and things. So um, then they gave you the, uh, the, the sectional chart that you need and all the, that manual, which we've all seen, and then the clear sheet of paper. But anyways, so that's what, what my experience was like um, coming out. They printed this out for me immediately. Got my 87, and now I've got to go through all the other process to get my part 107. So I'll make some more videos about how I studied, what I studied to get to the 87, and I think it'll be fun. We'll have a good series of that. Anyways, thank you for watching. Um, 
we do i have a youtube channel that's called the next adventure if you want to go look at some of those things we'll have some more drone drone footage in it now you, we had some drone drone footage in there from time to time uh, a lot of ventures my family and we go out and do all types of things go to all types of amazing places uh, but i may put this on a separate channel i'm not sure anyway so thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next